experimenters. I'm Seth DeWar. Man behind the camera with the exceptional handwriting is a scene they love. Uh, we're going to study Bohm's Law today. Well, we're going to build a circuit. We're going to take a carbon resistor and we're going to set a series of voltages through it and then we're going to measure the corresponding currents that go through. And then we're going to take the same resistor and we're going to submerse it in liquid nitrogen. And then we're going to do the same thing, set a series of voltages and measure the corresponding currents. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait a second. That means that we're going to have the resistor out of the liquid nitrogen when we're setting some currents in. Well, won't we fry it? Won't we kill it? Uh, but we're going to have around a one kilo ohm resistor. We won't be able to produce enough power to kill it. In fact, its, resist, it, its temperature will be essentially constant when it's outside of liquid nitrogen. It will be around room temperature. And therefore, the resistance will be the same, essentially. And then when it's in the liquid nitrogen, it'll stay essentially the same temperature, it'll be meaning it'll be essentially the same resistance throughout the whole experiment. Ah, so if the resistance doesn't change, this means that we have a linear equation so if we plot I versus B, uh, the slope should be the reciprocal of the resistance. Uh, so this is what we should get. For the room temperature, for the room temperature, we should get a line. With the positive voltages corresponding to the positive currents, and then negative voltages would correspond to negative currents. So we can use our knowledge of the carbon resistor to piece together where the liquid nitrogen line would fit in. In other words, will it be this way or will it be this way? Well, okay, so in carbon, carbon is like silicon and germanium, in that when you decrease its temperature, it will, the, the electrons will have a less of a probability to be in the conduction band. So that means there will be less electrons in the current fray. So that means the resistance will go up when the temperature goes down. So this reciprocal will go down. So that means that the slope will go down becoming more horizontal. Look like this. I'll be the line of liquid nitrogen. Great. Let's put together this circuit. Let's see what we have here. So this is our circuit board, and here is our resistor. Right here. Uh -huh. And I have the wires. I have the wires here connecting, and here's the actual resistor. A carbon resistor. It's over here because we're going to put in liquid nitrogen later. So let's grab its resistance. Use our old friendly Agilent 34405A. Switch to Omega. And we can grab any resistance we need now. So there we go. Ooh, excuse me. All right, switch the scale. Make sure we get the most number of significant data. Okay, around one kilo ohm. Terrific. Terrific. Okay, so now this is very likely the first circuit you're going to build yourself. So let's do it slow and steady. And I recommend you draw the circuit right before you put it together. So let's do that. Okay, so we're going to have our power supply. All right. And so that's going to come. Out. And we have a resistor. All right, that will be in series with the current meter. And then that will then go back to the power supply, back to ground. And then we need information about the voltage drop across the resistor. So we put a voltmeter in parallel across the resistor. All right, let's put this together. 
So, so we're going to start coming out with a red wire. We need a red wire for the high end. All right, so we take a red wire. Here's the power supply. Put in the red knob. Okay, so this will come out and then go in right there into the resistor. Okay, so now in the low end, you could either put a black or a green wire. In this course, black and green mean the same in the low end, but black is better. So I'm only going to use black. I'm never going to use green. All right, next order of business is the current meter. Well, that's this. Okay, so the high end is here, and I'm going to put it in the milliamp slot. We're not measuring amps. The amps would be above it with a milliamp end here. And then another black wire, and I put it out of the COM hole, which means common ground, there. And then this back to ground, the black knob on the power supply. Okay, now I need to put on my voltmeter in parallel to the resistor. So, take this. Red on the high end, the current's coming in. Black on the low end, where the current's going out. Switch this to DCV, direct current voltage. Turn on the amp meter all the way to direct current ampage. And now we're ready to put in one volt. All right, one hand behind your back or in your pocket. Other hand, turn on the power. Okay, so there are two knobs here. There's a black knob that makes big changes to the voltage. And then there's a, a little red knob which makes smaller changes. So get in the ballpark with the black knob and then once you're close to what you want, use the red knob to make the less the little changes. Okay. And this is close enough to one volt. You don't don't you don't need exactly one volt. We're not interested in any individual voltages or we, any individual points. We want a line. So you perfectionists, be careful. Okay, so good. We that's our voltage, and then we measure our current here, which is around 0.99 milliamps. And that makes sense to us. That makes sense to us. We have. One volt approximately through a one kilo ohm resistor, we should get around one milliamp. All right, so now we want negative one volt. I'm going to do that, turn it off, and then then switch the negative voltage. In other words, to make the current go through the other side of the resistor, just switch these on the power supply. All right, and then turn it on, and now we're at negative one volt around that and then a now a negative current as it ought to be. And then from here, go to negative two. Right, go to around negative two, measure that voltage, measure the current, and then turn it off, switch them to positive two. And then positive three, then negative three, then negative four, negative five, no, positive four, then positive five, negative four. You get the picture. Okay, 